I just needed to talk to you, buddy. I was Dude, like, you know, I, I just slid my underwear <laughs> off. I'm pouring myself a glass of wine. What do you got to say, buddy? It's like 11:30 a.m. But dude, I've been drinking since 8 a.m. <laughs> you don't wake up by eight unless you haven't went to bed yet. Dude, I'm a day drinker. Okay, I do the nighttime shit in the daytime. Yeah, but then you do the daytime shit in the nighttime. Yeah, or I sleep. One or the other. <laughs> uh, Actually, so I went to a movie premiere last night, and uh, and that was one of the jokes in it. Like, there was this guy comes up to... Uh, I was sitting next to Bob Saget, by the way. Not next to him. He was, like, in front of me. But anyways, um, so this guy walks up to the this door to, like, threaten the guy who he's looking for. And then this biker gang answers the door. And this one guy's talking, and then the biker gang guy steps forward, and he's got a red cup, and he goes, "Just try something, homie. I fucking hope you will." Like, I, I, I'm a day drinker. I do my nighttime shit in the daylight. Like <laughs> it was seriously one of the funniest jokes I'd heard in a long time. Good. So they just we're just that's all we. Sh- I think that's all. I was gonna say it's all we should do, but it, I think it is all we do is we just repeat other funny shit and steal it from everywhere else. And say it here. Yeah, like, every like it was time ours. I come up with original stuff, I get in trouble. That's true. And if you, but if you say something, and they're like, "Why do you say that?" I'm like, "I'm just repeating this jo- joke from Tommy Boy. I didn't say exactly. it." Exactly. <laughs> you get that scapegoat. I actually, <laughs> exactly. uh, like, you can't get in trouble with those quotes. Hey, you know, if it's a quote. Yeah, especially if the guy's dead. Like, oh, sorry. Right. What Chris Farley do? said what it. Yeah. And like, yeah. What, what? You don't like Chris Farley? Everyone likes Chris Farley. <laughs> I was talking about him last night, and oh man, like he's probably like the most missed uh, entertainer for me. Yeah, you know, I just, he's so fucking funny. He's so funny. So he gave funny. David Spade a career, dude. He, I know. <laughs> and, and how could you possibly? How could you say any more than that? You know? <laughs> yeah, they, I think. <laughs> didn't we talk about this already? When I said I watched the documentary that his brother made on his <laughs> life, but. I don't know. But it was good. Listen. When we're on the podcast, I don't listen to anything we say. Fuck no. People are like, that, that's, I like that too, is that people like will reply, like, or I'll even talk to people. I'm like, man, they'll say like some reference. I'm like, huh? And they're like, you said oh, that. Man. They're like, you said that yesterday. I'm like, oh, fuck. I, maybe, I shouldn't say stuff like that. <laughs> I know. It kind of makes you think like, boy, I, I really should pay attention to all the dirty shit coming out of my mouth. Yeah, but we'll end up talking for 20 minutes and then it'll all go to the wayside. Anyways. I already forgot. I already forgot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But what doesn't make you forget, like, uh, you only have the athlete page on Facebook, but like, if you have like the, you know, like a personal page, it shows you like the same stuff that happened that day, like, you know, in the years past, like your uh-huh. Facebook memories. So lately I've been seeing all of these, like from when I first got on Facebook and I had like eight friends, you know, like 2010, 2011. And they're just like, they're like Twitter jokes. Cause you know, like, like little yeah. quick lines. And I'm like, I got to delete that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, like, yep. I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. That's hilarious. I'm going to text all my friends that right now, but sure can't like, I don't want anyone to screen cap it. Even though yeah. it, even though it's funny, but you know people get it's different when you have thousands of people, um, right? You know, it, it, and, close, right? And, and even then, like I look at the comments on it, it's my cousin going, "That's kind of racist." <laughs> like that's the only yeah. comment, no likes. I'm like, maybe it wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah, but well, as long as you think it's funny, I thought it was I think funny. Like a limit, a time limit, like yeah, like. If- if it's been a year or something like that, it should just delete itself. I I, I agree. Or it, there should be like a statute to limitations on stupid shit you said, like with because everything's kind of written down. Da- like, like you know, there's a whole blue, uh, you know thing now. Yeah, like remember when Eminem got in trouble for he had that recording of him making what did he say something about a black girl or something like when. When he was in high school, he made a, a rap and recorded it, talking shit about black girls. Yeah, and it was like it was like thirty years before he had ever been popular, and he just broke up with a girl, and he was talking shit. But like that kind of shit, like yeah, I don't think you should be held accountable when you're forty for raps you made when you're thirteen. Yeah, exactly. Or like Paula Dean's like, 
I said the N word in the eighties. It's like, well, we, you kind of knew that. Like, I don't think she needed to lose her deal over it. Like, do you ever, did you ever look at Paula Dean? We ate at her buffet. Did you ever think that there was a chance that she hadn't said that in the eighties? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so now we're getting into muddy waters where it's like, dude, like, you, if, if I mean, he hit, says hit, it I now, mean, I mean, and, Hitler and had some stuff, good like, points. That's all I'm saying. He's just, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even understand. I, she lost her deal because the, the people that promoted her and, and she was representing didn't want to have someone that had that affiliated with them. So I understand that. Yeah. But if, if it's like, if it's like the guy who owns Chick Fil A, who does, he he offended uh, gay people, I don't know what he did, but whatever he did to offend gay people, like it's, he owns the place, so it's like fine, don't go eat there if you don't agree with him and all that stuff. Don't enjoy his delicious chicken sandwiches. I mean, they're delicious, so like, but you know, you think like, oh my god, they're really Dude, good. I would turn gay. I would turn gay just to get those sandwiches. I would turn gay if they'd start serving them on Sunday. Dude. How, Dude, how, oh my God. I think we were traveling somewhere and I and I had never had Chick Fil A and we're like, oh, gotta go there because they're not. I think there's some like in Southern California stuff now, but especially like this was like five years or you know four or five years ago. Yeah, they weren't really around our area. And in we California. drove around for like we drove around for like an hour and then realized it was Sunday. Yeah, we it was we like went way out of our way to go to it and it was we Sunday. Were in Sacramento. In Sacramento. Yeah, I think so. Um, and we just and it wasn't and it wasn't open. And that is that's that's the worst feeling in the world, right there. When you drive to a Chick Fil A and realize it's Sunday after you've been running around for and looking for it. <laughs> we drove to Sacramento only to go to Chick Fil A. You know what's fucked up is I've done that on like five occasions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never. I never learned. <laughs> Like I said, I'd go gay just to have it on Sunday, man. <laughs> Dude, we we went gay and we still didn't get it on that day. <laughs> Fucking no biscuits, no chicken, nothing. Just a whole lot of gay. Just just dick. Nothing but hands yeah. full of dick. Didn't even throw any chicken at us, you know? Just dick. <sighs> See, is that is that really what he wants? Is that what Mr. Chick fil A wants? I Mr. mean Chick fil A? I think if he he doesn't think that you know gays should get married and, and all this, but I think that they do it just because, like let's let's put this: if you found a guy who could make like a Chick Fil A like biscuit breakfast biscuit sandwich like that restaurant, you're gonna I'm marry going him. Down on him right now, and yeah, you're gonna going marry down him. on him all day. Yeah, yeah. So, he, like by him like not being open on by the franchise not be open on Sunday, it's causing. More homosexuality. It's just growing like crazy because of that, you know. I yeah. just this is this is obviously the situation in this country, and and nobody's really got the balls to talk about it, you know. Yeah, not not that there's anything wrong with it, but he thinks you know Chick Fil A man thinks there's something wrong with it, but he doesn't know what that uh, he's promoting it and and making it basically become much much larger in like in numbers, you know. He's basically created a, a, a twice the, the what's it called the you know, numbers I didn't want to say numbers again he's like <laughs> doubled the, the number of people who do that just because he's not open on Sunday you know that's it man you gotta open up even you know out of pure frustration I went down on you <laughs> you got you all know? you got all greasy just like you had a Chick-fil-A sandwich <laughs> <laughs> yeah true true <laughs> Chick Fil A, Mister Fil A, what a dick! Yeah, fuck. But um, so what movie premiere were you at though? Uh, it was called Stand Up Guy, and it was um, it had a ton of people in it. Uh, it was it was it was, it was kind of a lower budget film. For her. Yeah. Sorry. It's all That's good. Professional. Yeah. I mean, you but you're so tired because uh, you're there. It had a ton of. Dude, but um, it had all these people, and there was a bunch of big names and everything. It was a lot of fun. It was cool. Uh, my friend Steve, uh, his really good friend, wrote and directed it. Nice. And it was just, it was, it was about a 
the guy who goes into um, what's it called? The, the government hide you, protect you, and all that. Protective uh, service. It's witness like protection. protective service. Witness but, protection but, service. You know, but, it's like witness protection, but what's it called? You know, where you're like a witness and they protect you. I think it's called your witness protection service. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're a witness and they're protecting you and stuff. But what it's kind of name? I think that's what it's called, or just. And, and this is when we get. I just keep trying to frustrate you. I'm good. <laughs> you're like it has a you name. Know, the movie. It's got the lion and the king in it. You know, it's just like a Disney movie. It's like the lion and the king. And there's, there's like there's animals. You know what's it called? With the lion and the king. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I just I just googled it. It's the witness protection program. Uh, Not service. I knew what sorry, it was sorry. Before I even started this conversation, I knew what it was. Just a dick. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fun. <laughs> But uh, so he's been with this protection program, and um, he ends up doing stand up comedy like off of a bet, and then becomes really popular and all this stuff. And so obviously, the people who are looking for him find out about him. And, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's funny, it's good. It was, it was a lot of fun. Bob Saget plays a depressed country singer, and like, oh my gosh, it's, his, his character is just so fucking crazy. It's ridiculous. It's funny. Right on, yeah. yeah. It's it's always a good time, you know. You got to be down there, all Hollywood and stuff. And I have the exact like opposite lifestyle, where I yeah. just I just sit up here and then um, like once a week I have to go to this, I have to make a Costco trip so I don't die. That's about that's about yeah. all I do. <laughs> yeah, <But. laughs> you you are literally like those people that live in their grandma's basement and like, mom, throw me a pop tart, you know, like that's <laughs> you, but you have to feed yourself. Yeah. And you're your own fuck, you know? And like, <laughs> like the, the weekly, um, or I mean daily exchange when my wife's on her way home is, should I get the mail or did you like just not even like leave the house at all? <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's what I'm telling you. I don't understand why you're just not really fat. Like, I am really fat. That's the fucking problem. You're not. You're not though. You're not. You're you're yeah. disappointingly, disappointingly pudgy. That's what you are. <laughs> it's like, it's like, dude, like, you already have the internet mentality. You stay home. You live in the woods, like in the hills, like you. You all the gross and creepiness of 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 what we want out of our weirdos. You're just not fat, you know. It's like, my own. Why? Why half-ass it? Why? Why not just go all the way in? My own ego and vanity won't allow me to get that fat. Like, that fat. Yeah. But, you just wait, buddy. You just wait <laughs> ten more years. Ten I mean, more years, and then we're gonna be fucking calling you Gilbert Grape's mom. <laughs> I mean, I ha I have a great. I have a great um. Like For lifestyle. people that uh, are younger than us, Gilbert Grape was uh, what's eating Gilbert Grape was one of Leonardo DiCaprio's original movies. It's a great movie. It. His, mom, his mom was fat. Arnie, he played he played Arnie in the Gilbert Grape was played by Johnny Depp. Oh right, and, and right. it was his Johnny brother Depp was the one taking care of Arnie. Who was yeah, Leo. and and Arnie was the um, you know mentally challenged uh, Leo, which it was great. Which that's what. He did. I, he was yeah. he's always good, but um I watched the, the I think Revenant. That's a great fucking actor. You did. You yeah, did. Did you like it? Despite uh, our previous conversation, I did go and watch it. I liked it, but like I was watching it and and like halfway through I'm like, okay, I get it. Like it, yeah. it's like visually stunning. It was shot really well. Yeah. Um it was acted, but it was just the same thing over and over. It was like, okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah, it like, was it, it's a drama, and that's what dramas are. But it's just like, no. oh, how much worse can this person's day be? Which, uh, which I said the the alternate movie title for it would be Arnie's really bad day. Because <laughs> he kind of made the same sounds during the whole thing. He did. He had a lot of them because he got all cut up in his throat slice and all that shit. <laughs> how about when he poured the black powder in his throat? Yeah. So he could so he could light it on fire and singe up the burn the cut. Yeah, it, it, like that, it was, that. That's what I'm saying. It was just like one thing after another. Like, oh God! Like, I don't. I'm glad that's not my life. That you know, like over and over. But like, I thought that uh, what's his face fucking crushed it. There was not. He, there was Leonardo DiCaprio and it's the the guy who played Bane, right? 
he played Bang. He played uh, Mad Max. Yeah. It's it's like you know it's Tom Hardy, but yeah. his name is uh, it's Tom Hardy. What's his name? Yeah, but his name is um, oh in the in the movie. I don't remember. No, no, no. I knew it was Tom Hardy. I'm just <laughs> fucking with you. <laughs> I could. You know what the thing is? If you just said like that person, I'd know it. But you're but you know sometimes like people ask you a question. Or they're like, what's that person? You're like, fuck, I don't remember it. But you know you know it. But it's just because yeah. they ask you, you just forget for, like, for that split second. Off forever, yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. But I'm yeah, no. already crushed that movie. I know. Like Everyone's talking about Fuck Leo it. getting the Academy Award for this. But like he did a good I job. Tom, but Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy blew him out of the water with that role. Like He's just so he was amazing. much. I, yeah, I agreed. And that's what Candace said, too. But so... I just and, and Leo. Let's not take away anything. Leo, no, Leo great. did great. He did fucking great. I mean, he's he's an actor like to the core, and and Tom Hardy's a fucking actor too. Tom Hardy's yeah. great. It's just in this movie, if we were just judging them off this movie, Tom Hardy fucking blew him away. Well, like, like not even close. The the difference was the the difference is um the difference that I think is the character Tom Hardy's character yeah. is more type. fucking gross, disgusting person nobody likes. Oh, he's a horrible person, and he made you think he's a horrible person. But like, Which is good. That means he did his job. Yeah, you know? but, That's why I always tell people, people are always like, oh, I hate that guy. He's such a jerk. And it's like, no, that means he did his job. <laughs> You're supposed to hate the guy that's bad. You're supposed yeah. to hate the one that's annoying, you know? But and if, if they do that, if it's good. If, so, if I just watched that movie and I didn't look at the cast, I wouldn't have known it was him. Like, I never thought, like, oh, my God, Tom Hardy's doing a good job. That's what I'm saying. Like, even, and even, like, going into it knowing he's in it, like, it takes a second, like, oh, yeah, that's who he is. Because I, I, I yeah. purposely, for me, like, with movies, I try not to watch trailers, like, at all, because I feel like they just they show. They give a lot of way nowadays, yeah. you know? Like, I try to limit like is like if there's like oh this this like, if there's certain directors or certain cast like i know i'm gonna see it like I, i'll trust it from there so i just don't want to see any of the trailers especially for like a new superhero movie or something you know even yeah. though it's not like there's a plot but you know what i mean um but then you, they give away too much yeah it's yeah. just like uh, you know i like a little tease but like i haven't watched any I didn't really know much about what this movie was about other than, like, you can tell he's, you know, he looks all rugged, like, and there's snow. Like, that's about all I knew is, like, kind of looks like it's, yeah. you know, in that time period and there's snow and shit's going bad. That's about all I knew. So, yeah. uh, you know, but I would, like, if I, if I, I, I knew Tom Hardy was in it, but I didn't know who he was playing or anything. And it takes like a second, like, oh, yeah, that must be him. But you're still not even sure yeah. that's how good of a job he's doing. You never he's go, like, up. yeah. You never he's go. He's so good, and, like, his character is so gross. And he's got the ass, like, part of his head that's been scalped. All that stuff. Dude, he just, oh, he, he just looks so good. Yeah. You know? but, I mean, he came out, they came out in a movie where he played himself and his twin brother. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've heard about that. It's like a story of gangsters i want to watch it i think it's out yeah i've seen a couple of people yeah i've i've heard that recommended other places and i haven't uh watched it yet but i guess i i guess i have to but i wish there's a way that we're going back to my same like living up on the hill by myself going to the theater it, it can be the worst like people are rude i went and we got in a little late which, you know, that's our own fault. I always try to get, you know, kind of early so you get your own seat. And it's, like, almost full, like, all the good, you know, all the good seats. And we go, and there's, like, one spot. Like, there's one, there's two spots, uh, like, a, a woman sitting there, or a guy sitting there, and then a, a spot on the other side of him. And, I, and, like, you know, Candace just walks up to go get it, and I go, and then, you know, I'm, like, she just to sit down. So I ask, I'm like, are these taken? And the guy's like, yeah. And right behind, right behind us was, I guess his girlfriend or whatever. And she's like, she kind of gave him a look and she's like, I'll scoot down. So this scumbag was like sitting in the middle and he's going to claim like, so she's going to sit on that seat. And so he just lied like that. They, they weren't taken. You know what I mean? Uh, so then I, yeah. had to, then I had to sit next to that guy the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm thinking the dude. whole time like it like when you get in that mode i'm like fuck this inconsiderate like fuck like yeah. you know and then and then i have to sit next to him so it's hard for me to like 
ease my way into okay, I'm gonna watch this movie again. <laughs> like, right, totally, totally. But I just I I just put my arm and he got no arm rest that whole movie. Like you have to do <laughs> that like and you just and I had like that giant bag of popcorn because I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to give you your 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 dream of uh me being super fat. And uh Yeah, buddy. <laughs> just eating loud and I could tell this guy was like he was so pissed that his his girlfriend just like, I live right next to the uh the, the arc light theater. Uh-huh. There's two arc lights in LA. The one in Hollywood is where we had the premiere and they do like almost all the premieres there. And the other one is the one arc light in Sherman Oaks, which is really popular, really nice. Yeah. And it's right next to my place. And um, I went there, and that's why I watched The Revenant. It's the only movie I've seen here. And uh, first off, it's fucking $18 for a ticket. 18 fucking bucks. <laughs> Welcome and to second, California. Welcome to L.A. <laughs> L.A., dude. How much was it for your ticket, for one ticket? I think they're like 16 16 leaves. There were like nine bucks last time I was at the movies. Yeah, up in Oregon where they you freaking no, just a bunch I didn't of loggers. see any movies in Oregon. I'm talking about like in in Fresno area. Yeah, Fresno is also the Central Valley is also cheaper. Like, like you know, like up you That's know in the Central seven dollars difference. Fuck, probably like a, a you know, it's more expensive up here on the coast. No one wants to live you're in to, Hanford. You're trying to defend it, huh? So it's okay with you. That's Maybe it's good. fourteen. I don't so know. So you're you're well, part of the problem now. Ma- matinees, matinees are cheaper too. Yeah. Now we're taking we're okay, going into so, old Jew talk right here. <laughs> this is this is getting early old more, bad talk. early bird dinner. You know, if you get there before five, you can have salmon for eight dollars. So anyway, so and when you buy your tickets at this theater, you they have a little screen and you touch the seat you want, oh, and you nice. can look and see what seats are taken and everything. And when I went, it, it, was, it had been out for a while, and I went on like a weeknight because I'm a princess and I don't have a regular job. So, I'm yeah. and so I had a I had a nice spot by myself. I went and saw a movie by myself. It was That's nice. It was weird, but like it was kind of nice. We like eating a bunch of shitty food and nobody judging me as I pour the fucking popcorn down my face. You know, I it. Movies by yourself is underrated. Yeah, because I like to get into. I like to. I was talking. It's funny. Is almost everything we said. I I talked to my buddy uh, with me, and Mike, and Steve, Mike, the owner of Freakway. Uh huh. Which, by the way, here's a little plug: Freakway dot com. Check out my stuff. It's F R E K W A R E. Don't ask me why it's spelled that way. Just look at it. All right, do it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. You can, there's all the team Oberst apparel there. Just by the yeah, team o- stuff, nice, Just cool. by the team Oberst the peril though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm don't kidding. Do that. Don't. No, yeah. I actually, I'm, my favorite shirt right now is a Freakwear shirt, the, which is the uh, skull face it's one. A, it's a skull, yeah. Oh, I got oh, one fuck. of those. Yeah, he uh, Mike hooked it up when I was when we were down in LA. Yeah, they're really nice. They're uh, we're calling him Godfather now. So okay. I'm, I basically gave him that nickname when I'm trying to make it stick, so I'm saying as often as possible. What are you calling him? The Godfather? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we were uh, we were all talking last night after the movie went to a diner, and we're planning out all these videos we're doing, which I'll tell you all when we're not recording because I don't want to spoil it for everybody. But for sure, fuck it. Man. We've got so many video ideas and stuff. And we're starting Tuesday. We're starting some stuff. So. Cool. Anyways, uh, we were saying last night, and what I was about to tell you is, when I watch a movie, I like to like get all the way into it. Like I kind of like like you live the movie, you know. I like to like mm-hmm. zone in and forget that I'm even watching a movie. Yeah, or if you and it's hard to do when you're with somebody. Well, because you're kind of you're you're worried if they're having a good time, you got to kind of interact with them, like. You know, like, right, I mean, point. like you're you're playing with their wiener and stuff, and it's like, like yeah, it's a good time, but, but not, for real, it's like sometimes I wish my hand was on my own wiener while I'm in the movie theater. Yeah, I used to, uh, well, not a lot, but I did it enough where which was cool, and I had my old job, and uh, like in the early <laughs> days, they didn't really keep track of what I was doing, which that's when it was cool, and once they actually like made me have to do lots of stuff is when it started to suck 
Um, and you would start masturbating in movie theaters? Yeah, but I, <laughs> a couple times, like, I, because I had to drive all over the place, I'd be like, well, I'm kind of done for the day, but I have to, like, do this, I, I know I have to go back to the office at four, and I'd be, like, an hour away, and it's, like, noon, but I already got all my stuff done, <laughs> so I'd just, like, hop into, like, some movie theater and watch a new movie by myself, that was always fun. Nice. But, yeah, no, that was that's When I was times. younger, we'd, we'd, we'd visit my brother in Salinas. We'd go to the, uh, the the theater at the mall, the Nordstrom Mall or whatever, and uh, we'd go to the first showing or something, and then all day we'd sneak into the other theaters when I was, like, 10 years old. <laughs> you gotta do it. And then, you know, were you, like, well, it, when you're, like, 10, you can't afford to get more popcorn and shit anyways. Dude, we would bring in all kinds of shit. Like, <laughs> like this, a backpack. That's the deal. I, still, I still do that. Like A whole I thing of popcorn. Up and I'm down, <laughs> like a microwave thing. You go in and ask them for a microwave. <laughs> bring a hot, like some freaking hot plate with you. You're just popping it right there on a skillet or something. <laughs> like a uh, fucking, those, uh, you know, it's like Tupperware, but what's it called? Like Tupperware? Yeah, it's like Tupperware. You put food in it and it's got a lid. <laughs> <laughs> so you get that and you go in like with your chicken and rice and everything. Yeah, good times. That's another person where they like, they're going to go in the movie theater and like, I have to bring my ounce of almonds and my apple. Like. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm on, I am on track with my food right now. Nice. I'm feeling so fucking good. I'm leaving out. In the morning, I look like like so lean and stuff and and uh, I've been getting good sun and stuff lately because like well, I was also at the Super Bowl last weekend. Yeah, that's what I need uh, to talk to you about. And got some good sun. I stayed at the Dolce Cabana mansion out there. Oh, it was yeah, because you're doing the ludicrous. Sun. Ludicrous was in the room across from me. And shit. You, you I get... met dude. I fucking met the coolest yeah, dude. Everyone. His name is Brock. Yeah, I met, I met a million people, but the coolest dude, his name is Brock O'Hearn, mm-hmm. which uh, he's he's a model, but like he's an Instagram model. Yeah, he's, he's like, like the t- the tall ass, like like hot man bun guy, huh? Yeah, fucking gorgeous. The dude is, is like... The Talk most about going gay for someone. Too. He's like almost as cute as you were three years ago. Fuck. That's pretty cute. But actually, but he's also like 6'6 six, six or something. <laughs> right? Oh, man. But yeah. yeah, he's also like a foot taller than me. Yeah, he, he's the same height as me. Like, yeah, he's maybe, tall. maybe half inch shorter. Yeah. But, um, like a million so something cool. followers. Like, when I saw who was going to be there and I went to and looked at everything, uh-huh. and I was like, well, like, this guy, he has the potential to be like the douchiest dude in the world. Yeah. Because, you know, like, all he gets told all day is how beautiful he is and how this and that. And he is awesome. He's so fucking nice. He's so cool, like, genuine and everything. Mm-hmm. All these other guys, mm-hmm. they show up and, and they're all prissy and prima donnas and whatever. Like, him and I were just bullshitting, talking shit to all these guys while we're out there. But it, uh, the, it was filmed for Spike TV. Uh-huh. So the camera comes over and stops on us while we're standing there. And I look over and I, I do like, I do this so like for those of you who don't know, I think I've said it on the show before. I do this all the time. And I, I just start making up stupid, weird shit that freaks people out. So I was like, so uh, I was drowning these kittens the other day, you know? <laughs> and like, because the camera's right on us. I was drowning these kittens the other day, you know, it's my normal Tuesday. And I look over at him, expecting him to be freaked out. And he's like, oh, really, Tuesday? That's normally my Thursday. And, like, we just started <laughs> just going off like that, you know? Yeah. yeah he, he was fucking cool. We're, I'm going to film with him. He lives in Hollywood. Right on. And uh, he's in Wyoming right now, snowboarding. He'll be back, and uh, we're going to work together. Nice. Do but stuff. Th- that's a th- it's not that surprising he's not a douche, because I can understand why everyone else is, but when you're literally the hottest guy, like, w- you don't have to prove anything, like, like how could so what did what would someone have to be like prove if they're you know six six and gorgeous with long hair and they're jacked and ripped and like probably have a giant dick line, and bright, bright fucking blue eyes. There's not one yeah. freckle on their penis. Not one freckle. Every on vein symmetrical. 
Yeah, you know. I like mean, a, like, I understand why, like, I'm bitter. Like, I'm almost, like, you yeah. know, it's like, oh, oh, he's this. And then and then you meet people in person, they're like, I didn't realize you're four foot ten. <laughs> I know. Dude, fucking Ludacris is like four nine, and he, <laughs> and he was acting all tough and mean and shit. Exactly. And, see, the thing is, is when you do that with me, you're really just inviting me to make fun of you and to make it worse. <laughs> so, like, he's acting tough and doing this. And I told him, I was like, all right, man, calm down. I know it's hard to make 4 9 look tough. But <laughs> a little bit. Uh, and you should have seen his fucking face, dude. <laughs> like, I don't think anybody's talked to him like that since he was living in fucking Georgia, you know? Yeah. It's just, uh, he was not ready for that. And then he kind of just marched off. But, uh, that's funny. But <laughs> you're doing... I literally told him that. I was like, I know it's hard to make 4 9 look tough, but fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he was so bad. Oh man, that's yeah. great. But yeah, you were up there for uh they had the celebrity um it's we like did a flag celebrity football flag football game. Yeah. yeah for the Wounded Warrior Foundation. Yeah. You've Top done that flag. for last, the last couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and cool. then now in July we're gonna do a softball game and we're gonna do it with a bunch of baseball players and all this stuff, so it'll be a lot of fun. Nice. I'm actually more excited about the softball game because uh, we went out there and played football, and for the first time you know, since I've done these, I just realized, like, holy fuck, I'm not a football player anymore. I'm 400 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> you know, like, I'm chasing the fucking starting wide receiver for the Niners, like, running side to side. And, yeah. And I talk, afterwards, I get I sit down, and I'm just like, my fucking knees and my hips and my, my whole body just ache. So bad. So you're looking forward to just posting it up at first base, right? Dude, I'm put, I'm I'm gonna Babe Ruth it. I'm gonna fucking scratch my balls and, and hit home runs and eat hot dogs. Oh man, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna. You know what happens every time I play softball and it sucks? I'm I'm calling it right now. What's gonna happen? <laughs> Pulling a hamstring. Oh, whoever the pitcher is gonna end up. Yeah, no, the pitcher is gonna end up being some like old actress or something and I'm gonna hit her in the face. <laughs> You're gonna just line drive it back to her? I will. And I hit the fucking ball hard too. Uh. I put everything into it and it's gonna go right out of face. I've done that to three different people and I've only played baseball like five times. <laughs> you got a you got a better percentage like you have a Hall of Fame percentage for hitting people in the face. <laughs> Dude, over 300 I I hit the last time we played my dad was pitching and the first one I cracked and it barely missed his face knocked his hat off then, and then he, we did another one I, I got back around to the top of the batting order or whatever and I cracked it and I shattered his fucking shit <laughs> hit him in the shit and it swole well, that's even worse and you could you, I don't too. You can see the the stitching of the baseball permanently in his skin still. <laughs> but you know what the problem is? I'm gonna end up hurting somebody. It's because you're six foot fucking eight and you got long arms. So by the time you're making contact, you're like right in front of the pitcher. It doesn't have r- r- time to move around them. <laughs> yeah, they, they're the gonna problem. have to pitch and then lay down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure as fuck ain't playing softball with you that much. Uh, but, don't pitch. Just don't pitch. Everybody else is safe. Yeah. I, I'll, well, you know I don't pitch anyways. Yeah, you receive. Yeah. You catch. Uh, but yeah, my. my I still did, gotta order you that power bottom shirt. <laughs> you know, if I pay for it, you gotta fucking wear it. I mean, I'll at least take a picture in it, just like every other no, fucking no, no, shirt. No, 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 no. It's ain't Sally, Jesse, Raphael, help me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No one knows who that is anymore. I know, it doesn't make sense in this fucking context, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. But I am not, like, when we drove around the, the fit, for the Fit Expo weekend, not this year, the year before, and you put a dick in the back of, in the dirt in my car, and we drove down, like, Crenshaw... Not I'm not I'm not going and getting waffles with you with a fucking power bottom shirt. Dude, we're going to West Virginia and you're wearing a power <laughs> bottom. Uh, we'll, you are. We'll you're fi- gonna get pulled into the hills and never come back. I'll fucking finally be happy. Oh, oh. man! <laughs> but did you actually go? Yeah, to- it was a great fucking weekend. It was awesome. Yeah, After that, I had fun too. 
I sat in the hot tub and smoked cigars the whole weekend. It was sick. Did you actually go to the game, or you just went up to the area and did that? And... So I did that, and then uh, we went bowling. Uh, I went bowling with Doug Flutie and um, just kicked it with all these guys and stuff. It was cool. Yeah. It was actually yeah, a Doug good Flutie game. Doug Flutie is fucking awesome. He seems he's like, like he's like the coolest fucking dude. He's so cool. Right on. It was actually a pretty good game. I was surprised, but I I went to um my in laws' house up in like uh like near uh, Yosemite, uh huh. And it was actually snowing up there. So that, well, it wasn't snowing, oh. but there's snow like ten minutes away. You know. Yeah. So that was cool. I haven't been there in a while. Um, he has like you know those uh like side by sides like a Polaris Razor. They're like yeah. They're like a you know like a little mini dune buggy quad thing. That they're fast yeah, as yeah, shit. Yeah. They're, I've, he, I drove one of those around, and it's like, there's no trails. He's like, it's just like some logging road. And we just drove the truck up. And uh, I haven't, because I used to race uh, ATVs, and I realized I haven't rode, like, dirt bikes, ATVs, and stuff in, like, a decade. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's something I did, like, every day. That was, like, my thing. And, like, yeah. when you look at time, I'm like, shit, I did that when I was, like, 21. But, like, <laughs> when I was, like... You know, by the time, like, I got one at, like, 12 to 21, that was, like, what I was all about, but, <laughs> and, but, yeah. so, like, it took a bit to get comfortable with again, and also, we're not on, like, real trails, they're kind of, like, I had no idea what was coming up, but then once I did, it was cool, and then, he's a fucking psychopath, my father-in-law, so he's like, just go right up that hill, like, it's just, it's, like, straight up and down, and where you end up is on the, on, like, the actual road, so you have to go up this thing, and, you're going to end up, it's like, who knows if a car is coming or not. And there's exactly. like, <laughs> you better hope nothing's coming. Yeah. It's not like you can just stop and like wait for him and keep going. You'll flip in backwards, but it's like, like seriously straight up and down. And because it, it connects to concrete, like there's rocks right at the top that stick out further than the dirt does. And he's like, uh -huh. just go up that. And I'm like, um, okay. Could he go up it? <laughs> I mean, I, I know how he's, like, he's raced, like, Baja 1000, and they, he's been doing this stuff his whole life, and he has, like, everything's been broken on him. So, I, I my first caveat was, if we're going, I'm driving. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't want to be a passenger in one of those fucking things, but he, he said it would, and so I'm like, all right. You know, and I used to go up shit like that on my quads back in the day, but I haven't done it in a decade. I don't know this machine that well. So, you do it, and it, they're, they're fucking, those things can get up anything. And then well, the problem with that kind of stuff, though, is that then we go back down and he's like, oh, look at that hill climb. It's even that looks even that looks even more fucked. So he's like, just go up that one, <laughs> you know, and then so I I go and he's telling me to like take. Wait, this, you're riding and he's riding on. Back. Yeah. No, there's they're they're like a cart. So there's there you sit and there's a steering wheel and gas pedals and they're side by side. So um, so you have like a passenger. You know, uh, that's weird. Yeah, they're like a they're like a dune buggy quad, you know. But uh, that's cool. Yeah, no, they're they're fucking fast as shit. But I went up and I almost went fucking end over end up this other one because he's telling me to take this other line up an approach. Um, you know, like you know, like put the this tire on this rock, put the tire on the other rock, and I'm looking at as I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. as I'm going up. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, that rock is sticking out, like, as far as, like, the tire is. I know if I hit that, we're just going to go end over end down this cliff. So I turned to the left and took another line, and as soon as I do that, he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, and then we went, and it was fine. And then you go up on the road, and you go over it, and you go, oh, yeah, good thing there wasn't a car. But it it made me think, I'm like, fuck, that was fun. I want to do that again. Then I then I kind of remember how much all that shit costs. <laughs> oh, man. So and stuff too. It's not like you. Oh, maintenance, it yeah. Done. No, then I'd have to buy a helmet again. I'd have to buy pants, boots. Uh, well, like then gas. every every fucking week you gotta fix something on the boot, doom buggy, or on the fucking yep. motorcycle, whatever you know. Yeah. Well, that's what he's like. We're going and we're on logging trails. They're not like you know, it's not like a ATV trail or whatever. So there's just like random sticks and um, you know, from them log, you know, cutting down the trees. So he's like. You know, just watch out for all those because we pop, I pop a tire. They're 180 bucks a piece. He's like, I pop one every weekend. So I'm like, so I, I think it's a much better Got plan. To, it's much better plan to just fuck his shit up every now and then.
Yeah, exactly. It's like they always say you don't want to own a boat. You just want to have a friend who has a boat. Exactly. He has a boat. We'll go use that. Yeah. And he and can... the game, did you watch did you watch the game? Yeah. I, I watched it. It, it yeah, it was a. Uh, I watched it at his house, it was good. He he happened to drink about an entire like a bottle and a half of sake before it, so I don't think he watched it, but yeah. <laughs> it was a I'm, pretty I'm good... about that far right now. Huh? I I enjoyed I was glad that Peyton Manning got the win. Yeah, me too. Well, I think like I like this whole year somehow Cam Newton had gone the whole year while like pretending to be somebody who wasn't right pretending to be like a leader and all this stuff and even though you could totally tell if you watched them that he's not mm-hmm. and then and then the real him came out in that game like the, the, I don't know if you were watching but towards the end like they're down and and basically it's, it's like it's your last shot and yeah he gave um, up he got, stripped, he got stripped and then fumbled and rather than jumping on the ball, he jumped back and let other people go for the ball. No. Like where he totally could have recovered his own fumble. No, he and, gave up. He, you could tell. You totally could see it. And that's, that's the guy that I could see in his eyes when he was doing stuff. Like, like you, don't, you don't have someone act like that unless they're, they're like overcompensating for something else. Yeah. And you don't have to act like that that leads grown men in the locker room. You know the fucking grown men that are millionaires in the locker room? Don't listen to some jackass just because he's on sports center every night because he does a fucking dance every time he's in the end zone. Yeah. yeah? So well, you can you can be flashy and do all that, but there like there, there comes a time in any sport where you gotta grind. Like yeah. and then you can be the best fucking athlete hardest worker in the world but if you don't know how to grind you can't be like a champion i don't very few people get to get like you gotta be you gotta be like the kind of guy who's gonna get beaten broken and still fight to be in the game you've got to be brett far yeah you gotta be like the revenant you've got to be the revenant (laughs) you gotta be that level of fucking determination you know like just keep on going man but yeah, it, it seems like what, that's what that's what really makes people follow you. Like, like if if you're in a locker room and you've got Brett Favre and you've got Cam Newton both at their best, you fucking go with Brett Favre all day, all fucking day. Yeah, and not to say Cam's not a great quarterback, he is. He he's got talent and talent. He's just immature. He, yeah. He's fucking immature and he's selfish and honestly, he's kind of a fucking pussy. You're in the Super Bowl. And you don't dive on the fumble that you lost, you're a pussy. That's yeah. the way. That's flat out how it is. I I, I would dive on that in my fucking flag football game. <laughs> I I know you would, but what what it seemed like to me is he um also I'm 400 pounds and I know I hurt somebody else rather than get hurt. But, but yeah, that's it, still flag it, football. You know, <laughs> you're in the Super Bowl, you get the ball. Yeah. But I think, like, it seemed he was just flustered from the first snap. Like, he overthrew yeah. uh, a couple passes that were wide fucking open. Like, he just wasn't. Oh, yeah. He's just, he was just flustered. Like, I don't know the whole situation. Like, that's why, like, I kind of not going to. The gonna... Super Bowl tends to be a whole different beast. Yeah. You know? Especially not, a young team like that. I don't yeah. think too many, like, real young teams go in and. Just you know, like the hot young team, they don't usually win the Super Bowl, you know. Yeah, most of the time, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that they got to the Super Bowl. Honestly, it it blew my mind. But you know, they were there, and it was it is what it is. They have what it is. They all year long, they nobody really talks about it because Cam Newton is the fucking NFL star, but their defense in Carolina is what made them just sustained through the playoffs and at the Super Bowl even kept them in the game. Yeah, it was it was it was a hundred percent a defensive yeah. game on both sides. Like they they yeah. made all the plays it for, for both sides. But that the Broncos was the 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 Broncos won with like I don't know exactly I think it was hundred and thirty or something yards. Yeah they didn't do shit. That's the least ever by a Super Bowl winning team. Yeah, with one of with one of the best quarterbacks of all time at the helm. You know? Yeah, but Peyton Manning no, also did have a great game. No, and that's why I did. I wouldn't have compared him because, like, like when I said Brett Favre, I wanted to say Peyton Manning, yeah. but Peyton well, Manning is fucking 130 neck surgeries deep, and 
on so much HGH that his forehead's grown every time <laughs> they go to commercial. Oh, I know. He's he's not the same Peyton he was by any means. He's a, he's a leader though. And exactly. He's, someone you know, he's out there with busted, broken neck, and Cam won't dive on a fumble. Yeah. There's yeah. No, and, and he has and he really has nothing to prove to be out there and try to make it back. Like think of everything he had to do, legal or quasi legal or illegal. To make it back, that's the kind of like he, you know, just to play another. Like he has more money than he's ever gonna need. He's already won a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, but he's gonna do all of that just to play another season and to hope he so can get it back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> but like one of the things that irritate, even like you know, Cam might have given up. He might have done all this, but then you see all the fucking Monday morning quarterbacks on Facebook, and I guess that's what we're doing here now. But they're they're saying all this stuff about. You know, you should. They're like, they're like. You know. Nobody was talking about the fumble, though. No, that I, they were. They were more talking. Was all talking about. Oh, Cam's such a poor sport. Exactly. He didn't even do the interviews afterwards. You know that what? That pissed me off. That's the one thing I fucking respect exactly. out of what he did. That's what he I was, was gonna so say. upset that he wouldn't do an interview. Because he, because you lose the Super Bowl, you're supposed to feel that way. You should, yeah. If you don't like, that's what I said. Is like they said, oh, you should be uh, humble in defeat, and it's like. All that fucking humility that you see athletes give is fake. That's not how they really feel. Even if someone, no. if like, let's say someone is being a baby or something, I'd rather that that athlete or celebrity acts like a fucking baby than they lead. They read from a, a script that their agent wrote for them. You know, like yeah. I'd much rather see that and be like, fuck that guy for doing that. But I respect them way more for at least expressing how they really feel. And the truth is, like, and this is actually what Cam said, is you show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. Exactly. You know? Winners don't like to lose. And whether or not I, I like, like, the fact that he's soft, you know, I, I don't really like Cam Newton because I think he's just totally sick. But whether or not I like him or anyone likes him, you can't deny the man's a fucking winner. The dude, well, he the wants dude to win. went from... The, the national champion in college to the Super Bowl, and he, he's in the NFL. Like I, he's not a loser, and, and there's not many losers in the NFL, right, if any. No. You know, so no, nobody takes a loss and smiles about it. And I'll get better. You take a loss on the fucking chin, and you get mad about it. That, that, that's what a winner does. And you should you should look back and yeah you you take it on the chin you go fuck I need to get better or something but you should look back and say I was already good enough to win like you should have that thought like what yeah, the, what the fuck exactly. did I fuck up that's not yeah. saying you're that's not that's and people take it like that's not learning from your mistakes that is learning from your mistakes because you already you have to have that belief in yourself and it's not giving yourself an excuse like oh I just wasn't good enough I'll get better that's that's an excuse yeah. to make you feel better. Oh, I'm young. It was I got nerve. No, I'll just say like I'm fucking pissed off. I didn't like it, and I'm I'm know I'm good enough that I should have won. Like that's, yep. that's. But you know, then there's, and you can see it. We we see it in strongman when you see it in someone's eyes, and you're like, just say what you feel. Like, like it, it's it's the same thing. Like we talked about how like they talk about the camaraderie in the sport, and at a low level, of course, like there's nothing on the line. But once you get higher and higher, like. It's like I said. It's really easy to cheer for that guy in the other lane if you've already finished. Like, yeah, you know. But it's the same thing. Like, just it, it's all fake, and it's always it's always the guys that are like the shittiest of people when the cameras are off that do that when the cameras are off. Oh yeah, they're always the most humble. They're always the most down to earth. You know. Yeah, when the cameras are on. But then you meet those people, or you work with those people, you compete against those people, and you realize like. That's the guy who's talking shit about everybody behind their back. That's the guy who's screaming and bitching at the referee at every single show he's ever been to in his entire fucking career. Yeah. Or that's the guy that, that just fucking lies to the young guys to fuck them up just because that's what he wants to do, you know? And then, then when he's doing the TV show, when the TV fucking, when the cameras are on, they're like, oh, yeah, great job. We'll, we'll keep going, you know? Yeah. But that, that's all fake. It's all fake. So, like, yeah, whether I agree with what someone says or not, I always appreciate someone uh, being honest in a situation. Even if I don't like what they stand for, I don't, I don't like know, what they man. say. That guy was honest about not wanting to sit next to you at the movie theater. You didn't appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know. No, that, but he lied. To... <laughs> that's the thing is yeah. he lied. He didn't, wasn't honest. He lied. No, he was a... Like, he could have just said, 
I don't fucking want to sit next to you. Yeah. And I would have been like, no way. Nobody's going to say that. <laughs> yeah, that would that would have been, that's too much. That's a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, he has no right to say that, first off. You're in a fucking movie theater. But, but, yeah, that's the thing is, like, he wasn't honest. He's just like, oh, someone's sitting there. Such a little bitch move to do, you know, like. And then think about, like, his girl, his girlfriend or then, or, you know, wife, whatever. She said, oh, no, I can just move down one. And it's like, really? And you could tell he was fucking pissed. And I sat there. I spread my fucking legs all wide. Like, you know, I'm good at it. And I just, I can uh-huh. tell I, I made that person's movie, like, I definitely affected his experience. But, uh, Candace, because Candace is like, why were you chewing your popcorn so loud? I'm like, fuck that guy. (laughs) (laughs) But on the other side, I look over and on the other side of Candace, there's this, this girl that brought a, she's like covered up in a blanket. I'm like, what, who the fuck brings a blanket to the movie theater? Dude, I, I've, I've seen and known girls who are small, like little girls tend to get really cold in the theater. Oh, this girl wasn't little. Plus, when when you're like doing some fooling around stuff, the blankets like you know it's just nice for the people around you, so they don't have to see or smell yeah, anything weird. I, this just it was just she, it was she had like her knees up, like I'm like what the fuck is yeah, wrong? easier access to the back door. <laughs> but there's Dude, when I was in high school, <laughs> there was <laughs> you could tell by how this like how miserable her boyfriend was, there was no easy access to any door. Oh, when we were in high school, there was this, uh, this, this guy who accidentally slid the, into the back door and the front of the front had a movie theater with a girl. And I'm <laughs> trying to be as vague as possible. Um, he, yeah, he, he accidentally fingered her butt instead of her vagina. No, I'm not trying to be vague about what happened. I'm trying to be vague about who it was. Who it was. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, so, so for the rest of high school, we called him Pooh Finger. <laughs> he fucking eat milk duds in his fucking popcorn. Uh, or uh, Junior Mints. I, was, I still want to try that, the dick in the fucking <laughs> popcorn trick. Going to a movie by yourself and just do it? <laughs> if you're like, oh, what a surprise. <laughs> Your own hand. <laughs> Like a Cracker Jack box with the bottom of the prize. I don't think that, uh, like, that's a that's a teenage level of desperation to someone touching your dick. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. uh, like if when you're like fourteen, you could you're like that's fucking genius. I really need someone to touch it. Like, when you're thirty, you're like fucking. You don't want them putting your hand in the popcorn to start with. You're like, come on, fucking leave some for me. Uh-huh. Also, I think the first reaction for like a like a a fourteen year old girl or whatever high school age girl that felt something like that in there would probably like it's a fifty fifty chance of like raise her hand and scream or grab it and scream. <laughs> yeah, there's no good outcome. Like the, the, it was never yeah. thought through. And there's gonna be a scream either way. Yeah. Uh. So. I, it doesn't look like it's, it's, it's not like she's going to feel it and then be like, oh, I should just stroke this weird snake feeling object inside my popcorn. Like, yeah. and that's not going to happen. No, that, that's, that's never happened once. Like, no, no. Never. I, I think the only way you're going to get someone to fall for that is if you go to West Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Well, then they're not really falling for it. They're waiting <laughs> for it. There's guys going around checking all the popcorn. Yeah. There's fucking... There's no such thing as a, at a West Hollywood movie theater as a popcorn bag without a hole in the bottom. <laughs> exactly. They come exactly. pre-cut. They, they come that way. Yeah. They just put, like, a little, like, uh, saran wrap on the bottom of it when they give it to you, so you can just... Get... It's like the little holes for straws in, in your drink. Yeah, they're you know? perforated. Yeah, they pop open. <laughs> so it's... Fuck, that would be bad on the way out. Think about it. Oh, ay, ay, ay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is I, when it I gets... I can't think gets, about anything else now. No, it gets weird as shit at the end. Hey, let's let's quickly talk about some stuff that's coming up that's actually stuff, and then we'll get the fuck out of here. Um, 
Uh, what we got coming up? We got I'm more. Going set, we got El Paso set. next weekend. You're going to El Paso. Next weekend for Gat. I'm going to El Paso with Paige Van Sant, which is she's a fucking MMA fighter. She's badass. Nice. And uh, we've got West Virginia. Yeah, West First Virginia. Day, we sold out a day, so we're doing an extra day. Extra day. Um, yeah, startingstrongman.com/slash/seminars. You can get that. Yeah, we'll uh, start filling up uh, day two on Sunday. That's April third. Upper in a at Viking performance in West Virginia. It's gonna be a good time. Then I'm pretty sure. Kale's releasing free blood test to anybody who's ever slept with him on Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, yep, cool. I have. There's a yeah. We have that coming up. Then we're gonna go to the Arnold, and uh, I kind of. I guess I just said it pretty much uh, last week, but I'll be, uh, working with flow elite. They've, they used to do, they do flow wrestling as well. Now they have flow sports where they, they're covering, uh, you know, strength sports and doing live streams for it. Yeah. And, uh, they broke off you and you went with them when they split from vivid entertainment, right? Right. Yeah. Once, once they, uh, said that you have to wear condoms in California, I said, no I more like, of that shit. That. I'm going over here and I'm just doing strong shit. Um, oh no, baby, I like you raw. Yeah, like talk about talk about a fucking buzzkill. But uh, <clears throat> that that'll be fun, and we're gonna be. Feel it looks like fucking a paper bag. You might as well have sex with a paper bag. I might as well just put my fucking dick in the bottom of a popcorn and just leave it there. Yeah, as well. Just leave, let it soak. Ugh. Just extra hot butter. <laughs> Uh, what if it was like I saw this comedian she was talking about she's a lesbian and she's like she doesn't know what to do with the dick so like she was looking at the microphone like it was a dick and she kept like poking where the hole would be and being like you like that like holding trying to open the hole and blowing <laughs> in it and stuff like oh my gosh you know how terrible that would be Ugh. I'm pretty sure I've had that experience Dude, that's 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 what I used to do when we first got together. I didn't know what to do with it. You fucking did not know what to do with a dick, but look at you now. You too. Yeah. You too. That that's that competitor's you driving. You be a master of dick. Dick. Uh, what's a good word? I think it's you know it's like dick like like living philosophy. You know it's like a dick spurt. A dick spurt. Yeah, edit this. You too could be a dick spurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm gonna edit anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't edit. I'd call you the next day, like, hey, I shouldn't have said this. Editor, no, no, that'll take like three minutes. No, I ain't doing that. Anymore. I mean, it th- it's already up. I don't care. And then people message me. And they're like, "What's up with that? Why do you say that?" I'm like, "I don't know. Fucking, a- he's an asshole. What do you want me to say?" <laughs> no, uh, no, nah, they're fucking. You just say shit, and if people get mad, they get mad. Can't help it. Well, I mean, if if you don't like what I'm saying, then don't listen. If do yeah, if, if you don't, the, the truth is, we're just regular people. Like everyone yeah. expects us to be PC, like we're fucking Fox News or some shit. We're two regular dudes, and that's why people like this show. And if you're not one of those people, then don't fucking listen. Yeah, if if why would you spend? Why would you listen to us talk like with headphones for an hour or so every week if you? kind of even didn't like it at all like that, that right you're that just no waiting sense. for me to say one bad thing for you to be like oh <laughs> fuck these guys yeah but well, you said dick spurt <laughs> and that's the that's the thing if i if i had to act like that and be like oh, no, 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 i wouldn't do it it's not fun no, like, i'm not gonna we've both already talked about that we've yeah both like set fucking lines which is why i've turned down sponsorship shit before like mm-hmm. i will not send to this podcast i will not i just won't do it i just i'd rather i just wouldn't do it at all then i'd just call you up and we'd fucking bullshit for a bit we used to do that every time i was driving to practice when i was living in fresno we used to do it once a week yeah i'd be driving, I'd driving back, to or from practice i'd be driving back from uh training with evan and stuff up in scott in santa cruz and you'd be driving and we, it would usually line up and we'd just talk about shit yeah we actually every talk, week. that's back when we trained though so we actually talked about training but <laughs> i trained i know i got i trained today i wouldn't I went and did some fucking heavy walkouts, some balls, and then yeah. Hobes got such cool fucking equipment. He has I'm the best equipment. 
He's got blocks for me to press. He's got the ISTA deadlifts that I'm gonna. I've I've got all kinds of plans for that stuff. And uh, Martinez is gonna torture me with um, with some truck pull next time we go. Nice. Yeah, you can start getting lower. I had um, who was I? Who was I talking to? I think it was it was Kristen Rhodes was telling me some or Don or her husband Donnie, who's also a good competitor. Um, you know, of course, she was saying that she was watching your truck pull at Worlds, and she said the you had the the harness too tight. Um, huh? Because I was always told to keep it tight, and she said no. Like she learned, she went over. She said someone told her, like you know, like a European competitor, if you make it loose, then you're able to actually sit down, and if it's too tight, it's going to keep you upright, which makes sense if you think about it, because it changes the the angle of where um, you know the rope is attaching to the truck. So she said, like, if it's loose, you can just kind of fall down into it and you'll be lower. Yeah. You know. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. It's worth, worth trying out. Yeah, I got to check that out. It's Because I know that's one of my problem areas in the truck while I was fucking... Ugh, that thing wrecked me. Yeah, and it just... You are just so upright. Um, so... And I, like, it's probably hard for... Like you know, you're you're so big in the upper body, anyways, that it probably can't really get it loose, you know. But and we were always we were always taught keep it as tight as possible. That's what you know all the you know fucking pros and shit that when I I was doing always told me. But then I kind of went back and looked at some videos and like the guys that are doing good and they're staying low. It's, yeah, they they just kind of they keep it a little loose so they can sink into it, you know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those things. Like if some if some dumbass would have told me, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, well, but Kristen Rhodes, fucking strongest woman who ever lived, quite possibly. Exactly. I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, that does make sense. So worth worth trying out. I guess uh, there's the one training tip of the week for everyone out there. <laughs> In the last minute of the podcast. Yeah, everyone else, t everyone tuned out. Anyone who actually trains doesn't have enough time to listen to to 60 minutes in, so. That's not true, man. I bet you a ton of people that train listen to this. Like, you know, probably mostly. No, I know. But you know what's it's funny is there's actually a, a, a good amount of, like, really strong people that listen to this show. Um, like, uh, I was talking to Lucian Herrick at the LA Fit Expo. He's a big he's huge and he's like he's like it's it's what i listen to to calm down after training because i get so fired up I'm like really yeah it was just, and he's like i mean this guy you know he like strict pressed like 400 pounds he's strong um i think i told you about him there but he, he should go pro soon but he's, he just needs to he's just had a couple bad breaks and stuff yeah um, we talked about him we talked about him yeah but i remember at the end of the show that i was talking to him and I think it's his wife. I don't know if they're married or not, but he's like, yeah. She said, she says, yeah, I walk in. I'm like, oh, you're listening to fucking Kale and Robert again. Like, he's just, he listened. He's like, I listened to it before bed. Helps me calm back down. So I'm just not still all fired up from training because you guys make me laugh. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. Well, you, you, get done, you get done. You get done training and then you're like. Rubbing oil all over my beard <laughs> with his butt cheeks. Pretty much. But. Yeah, we should take a photo of that next time we do it. Yeah, next time. Well, I'll see you. Yeah, sleep tight, baby. Next time I'll see you be at the Arnold, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. You're going to Arnold, Australia, right? Yep, I'm going to Arnold, Arnold, Australia. I got a. I've got to be in Arkansas. I got a store thing in Arkansas the week after, and then I've got to go to Houston, and then I've got FIBO, FIBO, San Jose Fit, and then I'm going to be in Denver. My fucking life is booked for the next like six months. God, yeah, I'm getting there too. And then I just booked. I'm going to Hawaii. Nice. Somebody's gonna pay me to go fucking Hawaii. Can you believe that? To go, and then you just gotta go to some fucking supplement store or something. No, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, the competition. I'm gonna go judge. Oh, nice, sweet. Yeah, right on. Yeah, what I need to do is tell Gap that I'm gonna be there, and then they'll keep me there for like another week or so. 
There you go. Yeah, ask them if there's any yeah stores for you to visit on some of the islands, and you just jump oh, around. Yeah. It's the way to do it. Yeah, I got we got yeah, yeah. California Strongest Woman coming up March 26. That's. Are you ready for it? Oh fuck no. <laughs> you're gonna do great, dude. I bet you you're like the fifth strongest woman in America. <laughs> <laughs> that that is definitely not true. There's no way that's true. Way lower on that line, dude. I'm not even. I couldn't even qualify for this show, and it's it's, it's not even a qualify. Exactly. No. <laughs> but uh, to I'm promoting it um, up in Santa Cruz, March 26, CaliforniaStrongestWoman.com. But yeah, we it's 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 going good. Um, it's getting close where I'm starting to get stressed out. I'm like, okay, I need to just dial in everything I need, this and that. You know, like there's a lot that goes into it. And, you know, there's people flying from all over the place. And that's it's one of the reasons why I waited to promote a contest because, like, it's a little different. You know, you have to do it right. Well, yeah, one I, thing I, I want to know is you're getting good trophies, right? Oh, yeah. Don't, get don't give trophies. fucking swords away. No, no, fuck, don't fuck swords. Black away. I'm sick of give swords. Give away a fucking cool trophy. No, we're definitely getting cool trophies, like something custom, not not something that you just pick out of some damn catalog for, you know, that you see at every other show. Um, yeah. yeah plus, Make it worth it. Make it worth it. It's fucking, it's a big show. No, I agree. And it's, uh, but I knew with the audience, like, you know, we have a, a bigger following than most with, you know, with start with everything I do with starting strongman and stuff. So I knew if I did it, it's probably going to be big um, if I promote a show. Yeah. It's a little different than someone who's like, oh, I just want to promote strongman shows and no one knows who they are yet. Like, people expect, like, it to be, you know, uh, like someone who's been doing this for half a decade. But <clears throat> I'm confident we can do it. It's just it's a lot of work. with women for half a decade. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've been beat by, by women. And I, I got beat by Kristen Rhodes at one of my first contests in 2008. She competed with the men and she beat, like, three of the guys. And I was one of them. You were one of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually not so bad because she's such a fucking monster. So. Oh, she! I think the strongest woman in the in the world should be like some some newbie guy. Like, there's I I wasn't even mad about it then. You know, I just yeah. I just think it's funny when you say it in context. I tell people all the time, and they're and like that's the thing is like you can tell when people are like compensating for something, and they like a lot of people would probably just like quit the sport after that. You know, like forever. Yeah. Um, of a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot stronger than than I was, or ever, what ever you know, would be either. Would just quit the sport, but like that's I'm not. But you've been like getting that. emasculated by women since you were born, so I mean, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like where do you go with that? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I'm just look at me. I'm an asshole. Yeah. Yes, I, I had a Jewish grandmother, but. <laughs> No, uh, uh, but yeah, I just picked up some more prizes for the the show, some gift cards from companies. Yeah, I got plenty of sponsors, and uh, actually, right after this, I got to send invoices to get some more money for the prize money. Right after this, um, but it's gonna be cool, man. Uh, but yeah, that's that's why, like, I was telling you before we got on the air, I'm like, I'm in a weird fucking mood because, like. Like you said, this is the life we chose, but like it's so damn busy and it's go and you're just kind of juggling that you can do everything because if you're yeah. going to be successful, you have to do more stuff. Like that's just the bottom line. Like, uh, like you can't just it's, like... It's exactly what we want though, you know? It we, is. We want to and And it's, it comes with its ups and downs and it's hard stuff. Like I mean, I, I almost said something I can't say. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go fire somebody and... Uh, like I really don't want to do it but yeah. like it's, it's fucking part of the thing and I keep telling myself like look this comes with what what we chose like I chose not to work for somebody so this is what happens yep yeah you gotta make those decisions and I've done some and you like, you gotta run around like a fucking chicken with their head cut off sometimes you know and, yep. and you gotta be stressed out about money sometimes and you gotta be fucking in particular, for all your life because you're so worried about all this other stuff. I'm sorry if I'm telling too much about you, but you know, I mean, yeah, but, I haven't had an erection in three years. I mean, God, let this man be. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I always wanted, you know. 
Yeah. I, I always wanted a limp dick. That's what I've been begging for. <laughs> I just had this rock hard dick my whole fucking life, and it was always annoying. It never go down. Just I had, I had I had a decade of preopism, you know. Yeah, you know it's just weird. Dude. You can you can just show up at church and like everyone sees your lump and all that stuff. You know? you, you you start praying for impotence, and your answers your prayers were answered. And, and now you just have to remember the hard times so you can live with the soft times. And, you know, and there's always peaks and valleys, soft and hard. It's just how life goes. But uh, yeah. I, you, you can't complain about this life, but it is, it is a lot of work. Like, it's so much easier to work for someone else. But it's yeah. not because you kind of, I feel like I'd, like, I'd just rather just hustle and figure out a way, even regardless of the money. Like, I like what... What I like is I like the it's I like the chance to do something else. I like it all on me. Like yeah. when you get stuck in like a corporate job, when it's not stuck, like that's a great thing. Well, you have when you do choose to do that. There's a ceiling for you, you know. Like there's only so high with this, dude. Like you have endless possibilities. You, yeah. I mean, you could be the first female president. <laughs> Fucking, I'll, yeah, even if Hillary gets in, dude, totally. Uh, you're, just, you're the first transgender one, then. Definitely. You know, get a penis thrown over your vagina. Can I just have both? Honestly, I don't understand why everyone doesn't have both. I mean, cool people do. Shit, it'd be so much more fun. And every time, instead of masturbating with your hand and calluses and all that stuff, you just boop, 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 slide it in, you know? I don't know if, I don't know if it uh, works like that. Oh, it does. Trust okay. Me. okay cool. I've got plenty of drawings that I've put together. <laughs> All right. Well, you get back to drawing in your notebook. I'm going to keep stressing out and uh, put get all this stuff together somehow with everything I have to do. And uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. We love you guys. Thanks for listening to Strong Talk Podcast. If you like what you hear, go to iTunes and subscribe to Strong Talk and give the show a five-star rating or visit strongtalkpodcast.com. You can follow Robert at Robert Oberst on most social media, and follow Kale at Let Kale Lift and Starting Strongman. For more information about strongman training, products, and culture, visit startingstrongman.com and teamoberst.com.